You're listening to episode 123 of the Master Your Mind, Business, and Life podcast. I am so excited for June's episodes. January's episodes that featured our astrology, numerology, and twin flame readings are still getting a bunch of downloads weekly. And when I say a bunch, I mean a whole bunch. I promised you way back then that I would give you another round of energy updates, almost like a check-in mid-year, and well, here we are. Look at me holding up to my promises. We're kicking off this month-long energy update episode series with that little old subject known as astrology. There has been a ton happening astrologically in 2020, specifically in May, but this week's guest is queuing us up for a wild second half of the year. Speaking of this week's guest, I have a listener requested guest on the show, astrologer Danielle Page. Danielle is an international soul astrologer, intuitive spiritual teacher, host of Cosmic Body Podcast, and founder of Purposely Divine School for Your Soul. A self-taught astrologer who has been reading the stars for lifetimes, she continued her studies with some of the world's top astrologers. She then devoted herself to learning different types of healing to create her own style of spiritual medicine. By fusing astrology, energetic healing, and intuition, she's able to tap into her client's subconscious and help them heal their wounds, old patterns, and come back home to their heart. This episode is brought to you by Spiritually Seeking. When you head over to spiritually-seeking.com and use the code PODCAST at checkout, you will score 20% off services such as basic numerology reports, extended numerology reports, card readings, twin flame card readings, life guidance, and more. There are a bunch of new goodies on the sites. The card readings have been a popping thing lately. So if you're seeking some guidance right now in any shape or form, head over to spiritually-seeking.com and remember to use podcast at checkout to save 20%. While you're listening to today's episode, I'd love for you to keep a few things in mind. The first, Danielle and I had recorded our episode at the peak of the United States being shut down, which also meant that it was the peak of everyone being online and working from their home. The internet got a little wonky in some spots, so if you notice it in our conversation, just keep flowing. The second, and really this goes for every episode ever, I invite you to just open your mind. If astrology is a new topic for you, take what resonates and leave the rest. And as always, share what resonates with you. I love seeing your tags on social media. I'm everywhere at MindBizLife. All right, are you ready to meet Danielle? You know what to do. Tune in, turn it up, let's go. You're listening to Master Your Mind, Business and Life. Conversations with everyday world shifters, truth seekers, and rule breakers. Here's your host, Lauren Smith. Hey everyone, it's Lauren Smith. Welcome back to another episode. Today's guest is Danielle Page. Danielle is an intuitive astrologer and spiritual teacher. Hey Danielle, welcome to the show. I already know our listeners are going to love this episode because when I asked if there was an astrologer they wanted me to get on the show, dozens of listeners echoed the same response. Danielle Page. <laughs> Aw, thank you so much for having me here. I didn't even know you were going to say that. I didn't even know, and you just made my day. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. so sweet. Thank you. I, I feel honored. Honestly, oh. I'm really honored. Oh, the pleasure um, is mine, for sure. And I know everyone's getting a treat of their own, so... You know, when they ask, I do my best to reach out and, and hopefully connect. So when I got a reply from you, I was like, yes, win. <laughs> and, and what a cool day to be doing it on as well. You know, you've been, uh, yeah, well, I think we'll dive into that in a minute, but you have been speaking my language on Instagram uh, from all oh, things after Shiva to you going down some conspiracy theory rabbit holes to just questioning what the media feeds us. So I know we're aligned in so many different ways, but I we are here to discuss a totally different rabbit hole, which is astrology and get an energy forecast or outlook on what we have to look forward to for the rest of 2020. But before we really get down to business, I think everyone just really wants to know a little bit more about you and your journey. What led you to astrology and spiritual teaching? Yeah. So I always tell people I did not think when I was a kid that I never said, oh, I wanted to be an astrologer when I grew up, or I wanted to be a spiritual teacher. Like that never even crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to tell people that because we have so many things ready for us that we don't even know about. And that's the magic joy of life, right? That we get to discover it. 
Yes. So I, um, what led me here, um, long story short, <laughs> I'll summarize. Um, I do talk about the full journey, um, episode one and two of my podcast called Cosmic Body, which I'm saying that only because it's a long story. Um, but I'll give you the Cliff Notes version here is that I, um, my background's in interior architecture and I was living in Boston. I was doing that. And I've always loved design, but something was not right. I kept saying I want to help people, but I had no idea what that meant. Like, what in the world does that mean before you're conscious, before you wake up, before, you know, the world is in this, at this time, I felt like I didn't fit in because everyone's like, you have this great job, an architecture firm that was one of the best in the world, but I was really unhappy there. And people were like, you know, you should be grateful you, um, that you have this. People would, you know, kill for this. And I'm like, but, I, but I'm not happy. And so, you know, I was like, I can't live a life just because it looks good, you know, mm, yeah. to the people. So long story short, it was my 30th birthday. I was living with my boyfriend in Boston and we went to France together to celebrate my birthday. We were there for two weeks. And when we got there, he broke up with me. <laughs> so, what? Yeah, he broke up with me. So that was a big turning point. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, I came back and I was living with him at his place. So I had to move out. But then I realized, you know, I love Boston, but I was there for, I think it was seven or eight years. I can't remember off him. Um, I loved, I was just done with the winters. You know, it was fine when I was super young, but as I was getting older, I'm like, I can't deal with this, you know, winters because yeah. I'm from California. So, uh, and I don't like my job. So I decided to quit my job. I decided to come back and I moved back home to California where I haven't lived with my parents since I was 18 maybe for the summer a little bit, but I haven't really lived with them. And this is when the economy tanked. So this was last time there was a recession and everyone's like, you're crazy for leaving your job. And I'm like, I just had to follow my path. I just had to listen to you know what felt right. And then I was basically hitting rock bottom, you know, crying about my relationship, um, couldn't find a job. There were no design jobs. I didn't want to work at the same firm that they had. California. And so basically I was like, this is just not how I pictured my life going, you know? So there was a lot of grief that had to come with that and a lot of processing. Um, but in this processing and the crying, I started um, having a spiritual awakening. So I didn't know it was a spiritual awakening at the time. And you have to remember this is now 12 years ago. So I'm not saying people didn't have spiritual awakenings 12 years ago, because at every point in our life and existence, there was always some kind of spiritual awakening. But the difference is it, what we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have Instagram. Right. I mean, I know it's hard for people to believe, but yeah. we didn't have that. You know, there was no TikTok, there was nothing like that. So there was no community. And, and what I would do is go to the library and in the metaphysical section, there was like two books. So I would always lean there. But my point of this is I didn't know I was having a spiritual awakening because there was no definition or no understanding of it. And like, but like what you talk about, mm. you know, what like you share in your podcast, like what we all share on Instagram, right? Yeah. So as I was going through this, I started realizing that I was having dreams that started telling me stuff that would happen during the day. And I'm like, well, this is just weird. And then it kept happening. And it was almost like a twilight zone situation. Mm. Then fast forward, I woke up in the middle of the night and started seeing spirits like with my eyes wide open and I was awake and I was like, holy F, this, this is real. This is real. Like I'm awake enough to be like, holy yeah. shit, this is real. And I'm like, yeah. am I losing my mind? And so I thought I was, but then I realized I wasn't. And I realized that something was happening and started listening to spirit, which basically they're impressing stuff into your head all day long. All of us. Mm -hmm. Half of our thoughts are not ours. Half of our thoughts we're picking up from other people because we're all psychic beings. Half of it is our spiritual team that's impressing thoughts in our head. And we think it's us. We're like, oh, I'm just going to do this. And no, it's like spirit helping guide you. Yeah. <laughs> you can stay in your path. Yeah. Um, but we have to pay attention to listen. So anyways, I started listening. But I didn't know I was, again, this was all in hindsight, but I can say this now. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was listening, but I was just this strong intuition to like, sit down, meditate. I've never med meditated before. And then I would start going to meditation and get for like an hour and get so much information. And then one thing led to another. And here I was starting to open up. And what that is, it's an awakening. Like we're going through this great awakening for earth and consciousness now. Mm -hmm. I went through my great awakening at 30, which was all our old um, belief systems need to be shattered. And that is scary. And that is um, painful at times too, because it's energy. And when we're moving energy through our body, sometimes it makes us sick. Yeah. Um, so it was very confusing. 
Uh, I used to cry in my bed for hours, wanting, begging a normal life. I'm like, can I just be an accountant? Nothing against accountants. Love you guys. We need you. Thank God I hire you. <laughs> but I was like, can I just be a normal life and be an accountant and I go get a job? You know, and I'm like, it just, but it wasn't my path. And you know, I couldn't relate to anyone. So somehow I found astrology. Someone introduced me to it. I'm like, this is super cool. And I was like, I got to go home and Google. And I kept Googling everything about astrology. And it started coming back to me. And I realized I've done this before. And so I really much, I taught myself astrology. I mean, it took years, but I taught myself astrology. And um, I mean, we're talking like sometimes 15 hours a day. I was reading astrology stuff and like, like reading deep. charts and deep, deep. So when I say it's like, you know, like an hour here and there. No, I mean, this was like all day long. That's why yeah. I was living with my parents. So I didn't have to pay rent, you know? Right. Well, and like, so, I also feel like you can't go down the astrology rabbit hole and just stop at an hour. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, like, especially if like you're looking at a chart, I even feel like looking at mine, I'm like, okay, so wait, what does that mean? And then you have to go a little bit further and then a little bit further. And, then, and it's just like, I can totally see how you could make a 15 hour a day out of it. Oh, for easily. Sure. Once you're studying charts and you're understanding the um, frequency and the vibration and the archetypes, and then you throw in all, I mean, there's so many layers. So yeah, it was just endless. And then, you know, over time I was like, this is what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was never so much about astrology only. It started with astrology and now it's branching out to so much more because astrology to me is a framework of how everything is interconnected in the universe. So I love that. I actually love that I have this foundation of understanding. And now we're going way more into the quantum realm. We're going way more into the cosmos and we're using our body that we can transmute energy. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what I'm working on now and where I'm going. And we're always growing and I'm having another awakening just like everyone else. I love so that's it. how I got in it. <laughs> I love it so much. You're right. There is so much going on right now and so many people are awakening. How can we um, help others who are going through this or who are maybe just waking up for the first time? Yeah. So I feel like, you know, there's a lot of... Now, okay, let me just say this. I'm like, I don't know how to get the words out. I feel like when people talk about people waking up, it sounds like one person is doing it right and the other person is not. And so the person that's doing it right has all the answers. Now, I don't want it to come out like that. I'm not trying to say I have all the answers, but I will say this. I've, I've thought about this long and hard. And consciousness to me is a gate that some people can't even see the gate because there's too much, um, there's too many trees, there's like brush, you know, that you just can't see it. But then once you see that there's even a gate there, that's, that's even an awareness. And then once we open it up and we look in and there's a whole other world inside the gate, right? We see that there's so much more. So my point mm -hmm. of saying that is, is that it's not about entitlement. It's not like we're better and you're not. It's just that you can't see the gate beyond the trees. Yeah. What consciousness is, is saying, move into the trees and move beyond and open up your perspective. And there's so much more. So the first one to say that the second thing I will say is that to help people, it's this understanding that most of what you thought was right, correct, important is not the case. You know, I, I need to talk about this more and more. It's like, I felt like I could not keep living in this world that we were in before and for some reason, I was the one that was weird. I was the one that had it wrong. And I'm like, no, I think of this, a lot of people are walking around and they're just doing what they think. But once they, their third eye opens and they see more that we're put in this world of, I'm trying to get the words, we're put in this world of saying it has to be like this and it has to be like that, but we made everything up. So once we open our minds, move through the process, break through our old conditioning, we see that we don't have to be doing it one way. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes, it makes so much really sense. There. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, it makes, it makes total sense. I think, um, you know, that's also, it's also perception too, right? So my perception yeah. is going to be different than yeah. your perception. And, and I, I think when it comes to awakening too, like, like you had said, you didn't know at the time that that's what it was. And sometimes it oh, takes, God, yeah, it takes us like time to even look back and be able to have a new perception of yeah. what we were going through in the past. Yeah. Let's shift into, uh, go, go right more into more of the astrology piece because yeah. 
I think it's pretty cool that on this day that we're having our conversation, it's not only Earth Day, but it's also the new moon and it's the third 444 portal of April. I mean, how freaking cool. And I know after we jump off of our call, you're doing a guided meditation on Instagram. So while this may not be too relevant time-wise by the time this episode airs, I do just want to do a little flashback over the past couple of months and just discuss what we've experienced because let's be real, shit has been crazy. <laughs> like everything about 2020 has been crazy. So let's start back in January when we had that Saturn and Pluto meet up in Capricorn for the first time since I think it was the 1500s. Plus that same weekend we had an eclipse. Do you think that alignment kind of gave a boost in catapulting this whole pandemic? Absolutely. I would actually like to back up a little bit more, if that's okay with you, yeah. to talk about 2019, the build that happened, because I think that'll help people understand 2020. Let's do it. So yeah. In, yeah, in 2019, um, we had two planets, Saturn and Pluto, which you talked about. Saturn is a planet of, and also just so people know, every planet is a vibration and archetype. And I understand that people are like, I don't believe in astrology. Well, that's good. I don't believe in horoscopes either. So we have something in common because mm. this, this is not horoscopes. And <laughs> so let's go deeper beyond that. And so even if we don't believe in it, we still feel the energy. Okay. So because we're energetic beings here on earth, we can't get out of it. So Saturn is about structure, discipline, and especially that it being in Capricorn is about um, our government. So restructuring our government. Okay. The discipline with that. Um, Pluto is very, very deep. Pluto is powerful. It's about total death and rebirth, um, complete transformation of our soul, um, and it pulls things out. Now, these two planets were starting to come together. Um, so 2019 was heavy because we started to feel the vibration. If you think of them as tuning forks, then you hit each one. They were getting very close. Now, they weren't exact, but we were starting to feel the ripples, just like you know, if it's um, raining, nearby LA, right, where I am, I'm going to feel it, right? right. But I'm not going to feel like it's raining in Florida, right? Because it's too far away. So we were starting to get closer. Now, um, these two planets, they actually come together every 34 years, but the last time they were in opposition was during 9-11. So once I started doing research and I found that out, because I don't sit here and track every single cycle, that's spe um, specifically called mundane astrology. Um, I definitely look at the cycles, but there's just so much to right. track because it's like every world event has a, a vibration, right? So, but once I saw about 9-11, how Pluto and Saturn were in opposition and I realized they were coming together, stuff is gonna happen. So in 2019, they were starting to get close. They were also in conjunction with so the South Node. Now the South Node is basically our old karma, our old energy, it's like this trap door that opens up and things fall out. So it's letting things go that are no longer serving you. That's why 2019 felt hard for a lot of people. And it felt like we were just pulling things away. And, you know, it was hard. We, everyone wants to go back to 2019 now, right? But in it, it felt a little hard. <laughs> okay, so that was a real thing that was happening. Now, in um, January, on January 12th of 2020, Saturn and Pluto became conjunct. So they were exact. They're basically in alignment in the sky. Now, that hasn't happened in 34 years. Okay, mm -hmm. this is powerful because these are outer planets and whenever outer planets hit each other, it is a tuning fork that just goes and the vibration doesn't stop. Meaning like if you wanna boil water and you put it on for 30 seconds, the water's not gonna get hot. But if you boil water for 10 days, it's gonna be, you know, what, how do you think it's gonna feel, right? Yeah, so boiling. this is like the boiling water for 10 days. It is in as intense as you can get when these two outer planets are hitting each other, not hitting, um, dancing in the sky, I should say. I don't want to say hitting because hitting, they're not hitting. They're just, they're starting to have they're a, a rendezvous. Yeah. yeah, they're totally having a rendezvous in the sky, but they're both powerful players and they both mean business. So any astrologer knows when these two planets are coming together, something is going to happen. When any, anytime you have two outer planets coming together, stuff is going to happen. So January 12th, it doesn't mean that something happens. And that, this is the big misconception that I want to say for um, novice astrologers or anyone if you're studying, it doesn't mean that something will happen on January 12th. Maybe it can, but in the buildup, stuff started happening in November, December, then January, and then 
now we're in the after effects of it. And so this like domino is starting to play because it, it, mm. it, they already came together. They're in the sky and their, vi their vibrations are dancing as one. So now we're feeling those effects. Now, granted, there's a lot more going on in the sky. There's not just two planets. There's a lot, but this is one of the major, major things. And again, Saturn is about restructuring the government and Pluto is the death So uh, and a rebirth. So the fact that we have Pluto involved Anytime. This is like the first thing you'll learn in astrology. It's never going to be easy when Pluto's involved. And what I mean by that, I don't mean it's going to be bad. That's a big difference. It's not easy because Pluto goes in and literally, it's like somebody going in and pulling out your guts, literally, mm. and then dumping it on the ground and saying like, you didn't need that. And you're like, no, 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 but I did. They're like, trust me, I know you can't see it, but it's actually making you more sick. But so in the process, you have to heal, you have to get sewn back up, you're probably going to get an infection, right? All these things. But then eventually you're like, oh my God, I feel so much lighter. And I'm getting very gruesome and graphic because that's Pluto energy. So we know that it's not pretty now because we have a lot of Pluto energy. We also have Pluto conjunct Jupiter that's hitting up three times this year. It already hit up once um, on April 4th. It's going to hit again June 30th and, and November 12th. So yeah. that's major, major death and rebirth transformation. Like that's one of the biggest themes we have right now. Mm. I know yeah. it's a lot. That <laughs> is a lot. Three times this year. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. But even if it didn't hit up, Pluto's doing a bunch of other things too. Because like, that's the thing. There's always stuff going on. I want to say one thing. Everyone's like, oh my God, I'm going through my Saturn return. Here's the thing. Saturn return is like a walk in the park compared to the transit, the collective transit that we have. Sure. Mm -hmm. Saturn return is, you know, what happens when you're around 20 and a half, 29, 30, we all go through a transformation. But people think that's the only thing. What I try to tell people is all day long, we have the collective planets in the sky. So people are freaking out about their Saturn return. And I'm like, hey, guess what? Everyone, Saturn and Pluto are coming together in January. So run for the hills. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, don't freak out about your Saturn return. Like there's so much more is what I'm trying to say. Right. Is that, you know, people get fixated with astrology on one thing. And it's like, it's not even that. There's multiple. And let's add to this because here we are. So let's talk about it. Um, usually every six months we have eclipses. Right. Eclipses are game changers. People worry about Mercury retrograde. I roll my eyes because Mercury retrograde is like your little kid brother poking you and it's annoying right. and things mess <laughs> up and there's confusion and there's a time we have to take a pause for sure. But I will gladly take Mercury retrograde right now. I should make a meme about this. I'm going to make a meme. You I will should. gladly take Mercury <laughs> retrograde right now over all the stuff we're going through. Right? Mercury retrograde is not a big deal. Yeah. So Eclipses, though, are big game changers. If they hit a planet or an angle in your birth chart, it's going to change and it's going to signify um, huge growth for your soul. So mm. they happen every six months. Now, here's the, here's, the, here's the thing this time. We have oh. three in a row this summer instead of two. Oh. So this summer, we're going to go boom, boom, and then we're coming in with a left jab. <laughs> And then there's going to be another one. So it's a lot. Now, it's not about being scared. It's just saying that there's a lot of changes that are going to happen this summer, and they're going to happen quickly, swiftly, and then there's an unfolding of six months. So the fact that we have three eclipses in a row is huge. And then we have another one, another round in, I think it's like November, December. Wow. So this is big. So we might, listen, nobody knows when things are going to come out because it's based on so much of free will. We might come out of this quarantine, but then I think we're going to get right back in it again. So we got to mm -hmm. really get comfortable with these things. Whoa. So what, okay. So we have these eclipses, and then you also said that we have, it was Jupiter and Pluto again in the summertime. So like, yeah. is, like June, July, just going to be like mad. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah. what do you think the energy is going to be? Oh, it's going to be wild. Now, here's the thing, because all um, eclipses affect every living being on Earth. So they, it changes the electromagnetic field of Earth. So even if eclipse comes along and doesn't hit a specific planet in your birth chart, like, for example, the, um, just looking here, the um, one on June 5th is at 15 degrees of Sagittarius. So if somebody doesn't have um, any planets around 15 degrees of Sagittarius, it's not going to impact them personally. However, they can still feel the collective energy of, oh my God, right? You know, there's so much, so much emotion, et cetera. So mm. we're still going to feel it. But if it's touching an angle or planet in your chart, absolutely, you're going to feel it. Yeah. On a personal and, level. Oh gosh. And then what, what are the other two? I know you said, so we have June yeah, 5th, June, July. Right? 
Yeah, so June 5th, it's at 15 degrees of Sag. Okay. June 21st, first it's at zero degrees of Cancer. And then July 5th at 13 degrees of Capricorn. Now I want to tell you, again, novice mistake, do not assume that something happens on that day. Can something happen? Sure, because anything is possible. But I see energy coming in about a month before. Um, and, and then that week before and after is like wild, wild, wild. And then in between them, it's like, psh, it's just wow. total, total construction. Yeah. So yeah. basically all of June and July <laughs> from the way that they're hitting. Yeah. Now, I will say this, amazing things happen. I know tons mm-hmm. of people that get married. I mean, now it's different. I feel like there's not going to be a lot of weddings unless we let out, but people get engaged. People have babies, people win awards, people get promotions, like there's beautiful things that happen. They're basically game changers, but also people get divorced. And I'm going to tell you this right now, there's going to be a lot of people separating because we have these eclipses coming up, but we also have Venus retrograde. Now yes. Venus retrograde is not always the biggest deal. Let me just get the dates for this. But I think it's going to be even bigger right now because um, it happens about every one and a half. Yeah, roughly like a um, year and a half. Um, Venus goes retrograde. but it's one thing for it to be retrograde and people always go back and look at their relationships, um, see what's working for them, you know, figure out if, if I want to do this, is this right? But then most people, I mean, I'm not in a relationship right now, but most people are stuck with their significant other in a house. And to be honest, it's not normal to be with your partner 24 seven. Like it's just right. not. Most people go to work, come, you know, have jobs, they pick the kids up, they do whatever. Like that's actually a healthy relationship. So the fact that we're locked down, most people with relationships, really testing. And then we have Venus retrograde, um, May 13th to June 25th. So I think during that time, there's going to be a lot of breakups. Also, mm-hmm. because um, people are awakening and they're realizing, you know what? Like you just don't fit into my life anymore. Yeah. And, and sometimes I saw this amazing quote the other day and it was like, Something to the point, I'm, I'm going to butcher it, so I'm not going to try to say it verbatim, but it was something to the point of love can only take you so far. And when you realize that that person isn't growing with you, that's really when you have like that game changer of a view. And so I was like, basically really aligned with what you said. People are, are awakening and they're like, dang, maybe we're not on the same path anymore. Maybe this, this doesn't fit together. Yeah. And I think there's going to be a lot of that and we're going to have to see Mm. And that's okay. And like, and I think people also need that to give them themselves permission to grow. Yeah, absolutely. We don't, we don't do that enough. No, I know. And I think people, you know, relationships are tricky because we have this paradigm that you're with one person and you have to be with them forever. Mm-hmm. And as much as that's beautiful, and I'm a very loyal person, so it's not like I'm sitting here like wanting to be with like 8,000 people at once. I mean, listen, if you want to do that, by all means, do whatever you want. <laughs> right. I, I don't care what anyone does, right? as long as they're a nice person. Um, But we have this paradigm that it has to be a certain way. But what we're going to see is that all these structures are collapsing and all these beliefs that we thought it had to be, they're just made up by society that was based on fear and control. Mm, So true. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of stuff. Cool. All right. So we have eclipses. We have a Venus retrograde. What else do we have, Danielle? What else do we have? We have Venus retrograde. Which, which goes retrograde every two years. So the fact that in the same year we have both Venus and Mars retrograde is huge. So relationships are definitely on the forefront this year. Lots of restructuring with that. And Mars goes retrograde September 9th through November 14th in Aries. And Mars is our will and our action and our drive. Now, in some ways, you know, it might help because there's a lot of like hostility and anger in the world. But when Mars goes retrograde, you know, because Mars is your action, your will. And so sometimes it's how we fight and we push it forward. But sometimes when it goes retrograde, we don't have as much energy to fight, but sometimes it can go internal and then we can hold things in again, you know? So it's just Mm. the balancing act of how we deal with this energy, but that's going to be very interesting too. Ooh, very interesting. And then how do we round off to 2020? Um, December is going to be big, very big. There's a lot of planets coming together. I actually don't even know where my notes are. Um, but there is, I think it's Saturn and Jupiter, if I'm, mm, no, Pluto, I don't, I'd actually have to check, but I will say this, um, December is going to be a big, big, big month. Um, but I also think it's going to be really nice for us to move into 2021 because 
Listen, I mean, we're literally in the middle of a Pluto transit and any astrologer knows that if you see a client and they're going through a Pluto transit, you know what's going to happen. You're not always going to tell them ver verbatim. I mean, we don't know exactly, but we know that the vibration of it and the world is going through a Pluto transit right now. Mm. And it is intense and it is literally death rebirth. We're in the cocoon to the chrysalis, you know, the chrysalis cocoon and then right. to the butterfly, but we're not even near the butterfly yet. Oh. We're not there. When, when do you think that will get to butterfly stage? Oh, not for a long time, to be honest. Yeah, yeah that's it's going to take a while. Oh, we have a good three years of consistency of like what's going on right now. So Ooh. this is like a three-year journey for sure. And then I think the next even six years is really big. But I also, to back to say that I don't actually think that I'm equipped to answer when we'll be in a butterfly mode because there's always something going on. So I think it's a little right. irresponsible if I tell people that because – Someone could get married in December and it's like their butterfly is beautiful, right? But as a right, whole, right. we're just going through so many shifts. Now, I think if more people would wake up and start seeing the corruption that's going, and I know it goes against everything that they've ever believed in and it's shattering and bursting their bubble. But I think if more people can see that and learn that, you know, we have to change our systems because we have a government that's not always helping us. Right. Just yesterday, um, rabbit hole, but just yesterday I drove by picked up my sister and I drove by a playground in, in her neighborhood and there is a 5G tower right in front of it. And I said, is that a school? And she's like, it's a playground. And I'm like, are you kidding me? First of all, in front of a playground. This is what, this is my question. I mean, I know we didn't want to talk about this, but I just have to say this one thing. It makes you wonder people like me, you are into this. Other people get called crazy. Yeah. How are we the crazy ones? When we're the rational ones saying, what is the agenda that why we're in the house, all these 5G towers are going up in schools for children and right. in front of a playground for children. And then, you know, there's other things which we won't even get into, but what's the agenda there? Because it's very clear that there's an agenda. Right. And, and what was the time span? Like how long had that been there? You know what I mean? Like was this? Last, last week it wasn't there. That's why we're, we're oh, in. Oh gosh. Yeah. When we're in the house, that's what they're doing. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, yeah. See, I like the term. I'm not married to my beliefs, right? Because I just like, I like the idea of being able to question something and what maybe I believed five years ago, maybe I don't believe today because I had to question that belief. Absolutely. I mean, of course there are core beliefs that I have that I probably am going to go with until I die, but that's also something yeah. that we need to, to kind of know about ourselves. No, and I think this is good because we've been lied to for so long and we're just dumbed down and we just go with the flow and we're sheeple. And it's like, this is what this is about. Like mm. this is why I'm very vocal on Instagram because it's exhausting. I'm tired. I don't want to be sitting here screaming my head off and talking about all these things. Like I want to be talking about consciousness, like just in other ways. But then again, this is where we're, we're in bodies and this is what's happening. So we got to share as leaders. Right. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And I love that you are sharing. And I know that you have a guided meditation <laughs> post for the collective to help us all just raise our vibrational energy. Yes. So I'll wrap this up because I want to be respectful of your time. So Danielle, where can our audience go to connect with you further? Awesome. They can go to my website. It's Danielle Page, P-A-I-G-E.com. Or they can go to Instagram at I am Danielle Page and I post uh, pretty much everything there. Love it. Danielle, you radiate so much light and positive energy. You are a true world shifter and I am so grateful for you and this conversation that we shared today. Thank you. I, Thank I really you. appreciate it. And um, yeah, I just really appreciate your energy as well. Thank you. Whew. I know Danielle and I just hit you with a lot. I love Danielle's vibe. She keeps it real. And to be honest, that is something that I admire. I've linked Danielle's website, social channels, and podcast on this week's episode notes found on mindbizlife.com. Don't forget to join me on Friday for a new episode of Fuel Your Life Friday, but until then, remember, every level of life is an opportunity to grow. Be well, my friend.